When working with documents on GitHub, you need to establish some uh, habits or patterns to be successful. And this is what I call the work cycle. Um, so in the earlier section, we saw how we could make commits directly to through the web interface. Our focus now is gonna be working on uh, using software on our local computer here. And so what we are gonna do is basically start by taking the files that we have in GitHub and then pulling them down onto our local drive. Once they're on our local drive, we can edit them using a code editor. When we get the file the way we want, we are going to then push it back up to the repository on GitHub. Um, so if I want to uh, sort of diagram this cycle, the first step is going to be, if you're not already in the repository you want, switch to that repository if you need to, then pull the changes down from GitHub, edit them, and then save the document, create a commit, then push the edits that you made back up to GitHub. And then between this work session and the next one, you might have uh, made changes from another computer or someone else might have made changes if you're working collaboratively. So when you start the cycle over again, you have to always make sure that you pull any changes down from GitHub before you start your next editing session. So you always want to start a work session by pulling changes from GitHub, always end a work session by pushing the changes back to GitHub. It's really important not to forget to do this, which is where the habit part comes in. So let's go ahead and go to the desktop client. Uh, so the, right now, my desktop climate client is not set for the repository we're working on. So I'll go to the list and find here's project one. So you'll notice that um, the history of project one does not show all the commits that I made up in the cloud. That's because it's looking at the local repository on my computer. If I look up here, I can see there's a little three with a downward arrow. That means that there are three commits that are on GitHub that my local directory does not have yet. So if I go ahead and click on this button here, now I can see it has um, refreshed my local copy by pulling down all the changes. And I can see here are the commits that I made. So if I want to um, click on each one of them, this will show me again the differences. So here, for example, is where I changed the title of the project. Here is where I changed the schedule. So the same history of commits that I had on the web interface, I'm now seeing on my local computer. So right now, my local computer is up to date with um, what was in the cloud. So I now need to go and figure out where is the uh, readme.md file on my local computer. So uh, during the setup, when I ask where to put the repository, I uh, let it do the default, which was to put my GitHub folder inside my documents folder. So if I click on documents, I will see that um, there is my GitHub folder right there. I've actually mapped this uh, so that it shows up directly in my index here so that all I have to do is click on it and it jumps me straight to the GitHub folder. Uh, if you can figure out how to do that, that'll save you a couple button clicks. So if I look, here's a list of all of my uh, different repositories that I have on my local computer and here's project one. So I see here that project one, here's my readme.md file, the license file, and also Remember, there is the hidden get ignore file. So um, what I want to do is to open this file with Adam. So I can just right click on it and say open with Adam.app. So it's going to start up Adam. And now it has loaded the uh, file. One of the annoying features of Atom is that um, a lot of times it will open up with an extra panel here that's called the tree view that eats up some of your screen on the left side. 
it's actually quite easy to get rid of that. Uh, there's a little arrow that shows up when you mouse over it, and if you click on that, then it'll give you access to the whole screen. So here we can see um, the readme.md document that I open, and uh, it's got some uh, fancy highlighting because it knows that it's a markdown document because of the .md extension. So it's showing me the headings in red, it's showing me the hyperlinks in blue, and then the special code in other colors. If I want to see what this looks like when it's rendered, I can just go to Packages, find Markdown Preview, and say Toggle Preview. I'll make this a little bit larger. So you can see that um, here's the raw markdown markup over here, and then here's how the page is going to render. So let's just say um, that we want to change, make a change to part of the text. Let's change this to say examples mark. You can see it's selecting some uh, options for me here. So examples of markup syntax. Uh, now let's say that uh, this is all I want to do in this particular edit. So I'm going to go up here and tell it to save. Now if I go to um, GitHub Desktop and click on the changes, it shows me that um, so far these are the changes that I've made. I've changed this. Looks like I've deleted uh, a space at the end of that line. So if this is all the change that I want to make here, then I can go down here and uh, describe the commit that I want to make. So this commit is going to be um, change the to heading for. Of syntax. Um, if I say commit to master, now it shows up in my commit history. However, one important thing is that this commit is not on GitHub in the cloud. Although I've made a commit on my local computer, it does not get into the cloud until I uh, push it back up. There's two ways that I can do it. One is to click on this up arrow here, or the more typical thing is to just go up to the push origin tab here and click on that. Now that arrow with the one has disappeared. If I go back to um, the GitHub project, and online and refresh the page. Watch what happens to the level two heading here. So now we see that it has changed. And if I look at the commit history, I can see that that commit that I did on my local computer is now showing up on the GitHub website as well. So just to uh, review what we did here, we basically pulled down the changes we made in the cloud, modified things in the local drive, and then pushed them back up to the online repository. Or in terms of this cycle, pull the changes, edit, commit, push the edits to GitHub. We will look at more details uh, in this part of the diagram here in the next lesson.